With me, I had only a thousand dollars. Wow, a thousand dollars when you came to the US? Yep, Ooh, just a thousand dollars. Like I had to start a whole new life, whole new career. You should have a sponsor shirt <laughs> of Ladybug Espresso. <laughs> oh my God, dude. <laughs> On the 30th of last month, you spent in one day $15, $14.50, $23.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50, $15.50,
as we think about your background. But I want to tap actually a little bit more into your background, mm -hmm. uh, Martin. Yeah. What was the thought behind leaving Kenya? I mean, in America, you could do whatever you want. You could study whatever you want, uh, become whatever you want. But um, it's not as easy as it looks from the outside. But uh, yeah, I'm not complaining. No, of course. Um, how is actually United States portrayed in Kenya? Is it the land of uh, opportunities? Yeah, it's the land of opportunities. Um, land of milk and honey, they say. Okay. Um, yeah, because uh, that's how it's sold out there, and it's also in the movies and everything. So, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I mean, you know, we have both immigrants. Oh. Uh, I have in my veins the American dream. Yeah. I uh, still somehow, you know, believe in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it has become tougher and tougher, I believe so. Mm -hmm. I mean, just globalization, just general competitiveness. Yeah. Um, every place in the world has its positive and its negative. You know, yeah, not yeah. Uh, the United States is not the, the perfect land of every yeah. and, you know, similar to France, similar to Kenya. Yeah. Uh, but it's true that at its core, we are fortunate to be in a country yeah. of freedom. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm actually very appreciative of that, because as you mentioned, if you want to be a CNA, you can be a CNA. If you want to work and help people in shelters, you can do that as well. And that's an opportunity that is not given to anyone. And it's nice as well to realize that. Yeah. So thank you for bringing this to our attention. But uh, Martin, uh, that didn't come with quite a bit amount of depth as uh, we'll be discussing together, <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, throughout the course of the five years, I learned uh, the ropes and kind of got myself in a bit of a hole. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. But um, all right. Well, we'll be looking into how we get yourself out and discover a little bit more of your story as we progress yeah. through our structure. Which leads me actually to my number one point, which looks at your income and your assets. We mentioned that you're working two full-time jobs. What yeah. the heck? That's, that's <laughs> pretty intense. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I do uh, case management for housing. Uh, we, uh, okay. it's, uh, we try to get people from the streets, get them proper housing, get them jobs, and uh, Very nice. get them set for life. So, yeah, I do two jobs, 80 hours a week. Ooh, uh, yeah. 80 hours a week? Yeah, 16 <laughs> hour days. Um, I got the second job uh, Wow. trying to get myself out of debt so i see okay yeah. and how much does those jobs pay you both of them are pretty much the same yeah it's pretty much the same job with two different organizations same pay so i i make about a hundred and four a year oh a hundred and four thousand yeah. dollars okay so about like fifty two thousand dollars per job more or less yeah yeah okay so that brings your monthly net at uh, about $6,000 per month. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, so looking at the median in the United States between 35 and 44 years old, the 50% of the population makes more than 61000 50% make less. So you are at $102,000. So you're far above the median. Well done. But that's, my friends, because you're putting the work with uh, 80 hours <laughs> weeks. Huh? Yeah. Holy smokes. You never yeah. sleep? What the heck? Uh... I, I survive. I, yeah. I, I push day by day. Yeah. Yeah. I can uh, um, I can imagine. Yeah. It's a, I don't intend it to be a, like a permanent thing. It's I am hoping so. for the death. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, if you continue on some of that spending, <laughs> my friend, you're going to be here for the long run. Huh? So uh, we'll yeah. be discussing that again. OK, let's move on then to your assets. Uh, thank you for providing us with your statements. And here I see on your checking account, you have a balance of five hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay, I see that you have another statement here for a saving account, a thousand eight hundred. Yeah, and finally another one for a thousand eight hundred as well. So that brings your total assets to about four thousand one hundred right now, liquidity from what I could see. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other assets? No, that's that's all. That's everything you have. That's everything. I Investment have. accounts. Uh, nah. Retirements. No. Okay. And uh, no equity, like housing, any of that? No. No, no. All right. Let's move on to the rest of our section now that looks at your expenses and your debt. So your expenses. 
Martin, uh, how much do you spend on rent per month? Rent is 2400 but I okay. split it uh, half with my wife. So Okay, so you have a partner? Yeah. Nice, partner. okay. Yeah. So that's about uh, with utilities, utilities included? Yeah, utilities included. Okay, so uh, with the electric home, it's probably 1003 So you are, your housing expense compared to your income is 21%. Okay. okay, we like it to be below 28. Okay, um, I mean, you're doing pretty good, that's awesome for your housing expense. I'm not too concerned. Let's move on. Okay, looking at your transportation components, uh, Martin. So, do you own a car? Well, it's uh, it's a loan car, so oh, okay, it's a loan. Okay, yeah. what car do you drive? Uh, Toyota 2019 uh, Camry. Okay, 2019 yeah. Toyota Camry. Yeah, how much do you own on this car? I still have 27000 to pay. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's the $27,000 debt here. Yeah. Mm, 4.8%. Not too bad of an interest. Yeah. Well done. Uh, how many miles does it has? Uh, right now it has 56000 Okay. So you yeah. got it fairly new pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I look at the Kelly Blue Book value for it, which mm. looks at the value of cars, if you were to sell it, private party, yeah. uh, it's about $21,000. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you are, my friend, on your car about 6000 below the value. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Which is expected. Uh, yeah. Yes and no. You didn't put any down payment on it? I put a thousand. Oh, well, yeah, it's that's peanuts. Much, yeah. 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 Mm. I mean, yeah, you if you sell the car, you're losing six grand from what you owe. Yeah. So if you give back your if you sell your car back, you have to give six thousand more than the car. Oh. So yeah, I wouldn't touch it. Mm -hmm. uh, with an interest of four point eight percent, it's not too bad. It's not amazing. But yeah. uh, you know, food for thoughts. You bought a quite of an expensive car, huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But Toyota Camrys, for the most part, they are very reliable. You haven't had many issues, I imagine. No, no, yeah. no, no. Let's move on to the rest of our expenses. Uh, looking at average gas consumption and insurance based on the statement you provided. Your car expense, mm -hmm. transportation costs, against your income is 18%. Oh, yeah. We like it to be below 15 Oh. Mm -hmm. You're not too off, okay? okay? You have a reliable car. You're not much building equity, but I'm fine with that. Let's move on to the rest of our expenses here, Martin, which leads me uh, to some of your debt. Um, well, first here, if I look at your credit card statement, you have a credit card balance of $2,600 yeah. at an interest rate of 16%. How did you stack up that debt, my friend? Around December of 2020 is when I uh, previously had a car that I had bought cash. So okay. uh, I didn't have to do any monthly payments. Then uh, around, uh, so that's December of 2020, I got a car. And um, January of 2021, I got married. So I, uh, yeah. okay. So back to back. Yeah, back to back. So. Did you budget it for that? I, I, at the moment, I, I did, mm. but looking back, I, I should have put more thought into that. Yeah. As, uh, especially the car, really. Oh, so because you paid the car with credit cards? Uh, yeah. Oh, no. Yes. Then, oh. um, then did the wedding. Then uh, at that point, I had, uh, at that point, I used to do one job. I lived with a roommate, so mm -hmm. my expenses were so low. And uh, yeah. I so see. I have a new car, a wife, basically a whole makeover of my life again. Yeah, makeover of your life with <laughs> debt. Huh? What the heck, Martin? Come on, man. Yeah. Okay, so 22600 What is nice to see, though, is you're not using any more that credit card, so you're not stacking debt on yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I see another personal loan, 18200 Yeah. at an interest rate of 11%. Yeah. What is that? I took out a loan to move houses, like, because uh, now I'm married and um, mm -hmm. I was living with a roommate. But now you're moving into a f apartment on your own with your wife. So you have to, like, furnish it, mm. move out. So I took a loan. Then I um, also consolidated a bit of my uh, the credit card debt was a bit higher than that. So I see. I consolidated it a bit and put it in one loan. That's how I took out the loan. 
I see, which yeah. stacks up to $18,000. So what did you buy, like $2,000 sofas? No, come on, uh, like <laughs> a move shouldn't cost you 18 grand. Um, I think that loan I have um, pushed it between, I have refinanced it with a few different companies because initially it, was, it came up to about 13000 mm. So maybe move it's it. the interest that has yeah. been stacking. Oh, yeah. La, 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 yeah. La. yeah. So see, guys, a perfect example of when you don't realize loan stacking with interest. It was at thirteen. Now it's at eighteen. Yeah. It's almost yeah. half of what you own already. So oh, come on, and you have another loan as well of three thousand two hundred at thirteen yeah. percent interest. That came out of the IRS tax returns. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck happened? So, so we filed with my wife, and uh, our joint returns came to around uh, 150. Okay. So we owed the IRS about 3,500. I see. So uh, I, I, I don't know if this was a good idea or not, so we decided it's better to owe the bank than the IRS. Yeah, yes, it is, it is. So, okay. So instead of getting a payment plan uh, with the IRS, we paid off with that line of credit. But um, so whatever plans we had for the IRS is what the plans we have for that oh, loan. Oh, God. Um, okay. So this is tax money that you haven't paid. Yeah. But um, we, 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 we have a plan to finish at least that one in three months' time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So if I look at the <laughs> sum of your debt in five years, you've stacked up... Fifty-one thousand dollars worth of debt, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is not good, dude. Like, I know you. You know, you came in with nothing, but don't stack up on debt, dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and now you you end up working like eighty-hour jobs. And, and and actually, let's you know what? Let's go straight into some of your expenses because yeah. you're making a good salary, but you're not making much payment on that debt. Yeah. And I know where you're spending your money, my friend. Uh, what the heck <laughs> is going on? You're an official partner of DoorDash? Uh, no. <laughs> Dude, DoorDash, $33. So this is just uh, about one month's worth of statement. Every single day. And sometimes three times a day. On the 19th, you've spent $24, $23, $29. What no, but what do you buy three times a day? DoorDash is crazy. Pretty much. Uh, why? Why? Why do you do that? Um, I I know that's that's uh, one of the bad habits I want to drop. Uh, yeah. I can't really explain because we do cook at home, but then it's it's always it's always fast food. Yeah. So you have on your driveway a thirty thousand dollar car. But you're not able, Martin, to go pick it up to freaking McDonald's <laughs> to pick up your food. And you're paying crazy fees on this, on bills of McDonald's, like $42 on McDonald's. You buy the triple uh, XL uh, Big Mac? What the <laughs> heck, dude? <laughs> Multiple times a day. Here, twice a day, McDonald's uh, again. Yeah, on DoorDash. I think, I think we, uh, that, that's one thing I... I, I from at the top of my head, I know I need to change on that. I mean, let me tell you. Yeah. Are you ready? How much do you think you spent last month on DoorDash? Uh, maybe between two fifty and three. Five hundred and twenty-six dollars. Oh. Uh, yeah. Last uh, month you spent five hundred and twenty freaking six dollars on DoorDash. You're stacking fifty-one thousand dollars of debt. But you're working 16-hour days, my friend. And you're stacking so much money on this. But that's not the only thing. You're also the official partner. That you should have a sponsor shirt <laughs> of Ladybug Espresso. Oh, my God, dude. 15, 19, 12, 23. Are you ready for this? This yeah. one is the jackpot. On the 30th of last month, you spend in one day $15, $14.50, $23.50, $15.50, $16.50, $17.50. You go there every hour of the day. What the <laughs> heck? That, so for that, for the coffee, I have a story for that. All right. So my wife is currently pregnant. Okay. And part of her cravings is um, a, a juice that's called mango with a dash of lemonade. Yeah. So right. she can have, especially now that it's hot, she can have like five of those in a day. So. 
That's how she th- goes five times to the freaking shop and it's fifteen dollars each time. Yeah, it's no, but it's insane. I know. How much did you spend? You spend on this uh, mango sip of uh, <laughs> of nothingness <laughs> last month. <laughs> no, but I understand your wife is pregnant. Oh, actually, that's very interesting. So you you're waiting for a kid. Yeah. When is he coming? Or she? Uh, I apologize. When is she or he coming? It's he in. Um, Two months. Two months. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just put this on the back burner. Let's come back to this. <laughs> I want to understand how much you sp- think you spent last month on this uh, mango drink. It shouldn't be as much as the DoorDash. So I'm thinking um, two fifty, three hundred. Three hundred and eighteen dollars. Okay. Yeah. Here, looking at two expenses, mm-hmm. Martin, DoorDash, and Ladybug, whatever, eight hundred and forty-four dollars. That is 40 hours of work. Yeah. I mean, a little bit less than that. But still, it's crazy. I don't even know how you, 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 you're able to spend that money when you're working 16-hour days. <laughs> uh, like, no, but how? Like, uh, I mean, with Dodash, the, 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 cra- the crazy part is you can, someone can be in another city and you can yeah. order food for them. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree. Those two. And uh, I'm not even counting for some of the Starbucks too as yeah. well. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I know the insane. eating out and the buying food out is... You're working, Martin, for useless expenses. Yes. I, I, I don't disagree with the fact that you need to allow yourself for some treats, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's very honorable to you to come in the U.S. five years ago with nothing and build it. Yeah, yeah. But the way you are converting it right now yeah. is not the good way at all. Financially, this is a this can become very very tough, especially if you're waiting for a kid. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Fun fact, actually, did you know that? Uh, I mean, I guess I was reading this uh, not too long ago. Uh, do you know how much does a kid cost per year in the United States on average? Um, no. I think it's about what fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars oh. per year, mm. and that's not including yet uh, some of the costs associated with education. Yeah, yeah. You you need at I mean at thirty six years old right now, Martin. You need to completely reprioritize your life yeah. because you're cranking eighty hours a week, yeah. but you're spending all of that fruit of labor in nothing nothing and uh as i look into the rest of your expenses you're also stacking quite a bit on subscriptions and uh, amazon purchases left and right you know hundreds of dollars on amazon too <clears throat> you know like yeah. uh, do you need any of this when you're stacking fifty one thousand dollars off bad debt um. you if it's not it's not a house that you're building here my friend it's bad debt <laughs> no it's true, Martin. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, man. But <laughs> like, I want you to really think about reframing your situation, okay? Yeah. So we looked into your expenses. I want you to start thinking about your future kid. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to bring this point home as we look together into the money case. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. And we are back from the money case here with our friend, Martin. So, Martin, number one, have you prepared anything financially for the arrival of your kid? Well, we've uh, made purchases for clothes, uh, baby okay. clothes and everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What so about the $17,000 that I mentioned to you previously? Do you, uh, are you financially ready to welcome this child? Um, well, um, that's why I'm trying to look at the loopholes where I lose some of my money and uh, stop that flow, then de- okay. redirect it into something. And this, <laughs> yeah. this is the something, okay? Yeah. yeah. When a kid comes to life, I think that what comes with it is the responsibilities of providing potentially the best light for he or her. Yeah. And with the system in the United States that is generally, you know, quite expensive, um, you want to offer the chance for your kids to succeed. Now, this could be through, you know, lessons or through your own experience. But generally, a financial, you know, financial help for your kid will be ramping up for his success. Assuming the cost of tuition in the United States, 
there are systems in place that you can take advantage of. There are like um, tax advantage savings accounts, like the 529 it's called. It's a direct deduction from your payroll, okay? Yeah, yeah. And this is what I want you to start thinking. Mm -hmm. Every month, yeah. from the moment your son is born, I want you to put money mm -hmm. on the side into that 529, okay? Mm -hmm. There is a rule that I like to follow. Given your situation, there are really two rules that exist with regards to college savings. Yeah. One is what is called the one-third rule, meaning that you're going to save enough so that by the time your kid is 18 years old, you can cover one-third of their tuition cost and their just studies cost. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't think this rule will work with you because you're not going to follow it. Instead, I want to put a number, mm -hmm. which is called the $2,000 per year rule. Okay? okay, so what does the $2,000 per year rule mean? It means that every month, Martin, mm -hmm. you put $170 on the side for your children from the moment they are born yeah. for the next 18 years. Okay, that sums to $2,000 per year. Yeah. By the time your kid is 18 mm -hmm. on his account for that children, you will have saved for him and his future a hundred and three thousand dollars hmm. this is an easy you could say easy maybe not 170 is not easy for everybody to save yeah but this is a good number for you to start with this is what you kids at 18 can benefit from an involvement right on today you take responsibility yeah and you're like all right i'm bringing this uh, piece of love and this child to the world now it's on my shoulder to really Take care of that. And it's by doing little things like this. There are so many different paths. The one that the one that I want you to look for is the 529 plan. Okay? Yeah. And this, you know, assuming the average cost of public school in the United States should cover at least, you know, 50% of the tuition cost for yeah. a public school. Yeah. This is good stuff, man. This is how you ramp up your kid, okay? Yeah. So this is what? This is a half a month of your ladybug crap. No, but come <laughs> on, dude. It's, uh, it's, it's, one, it's, it's one third of your DoorDash. That's it's true. a day of your freaking DoorDash. No, but come <laughs> on. All right? Yeah. So this is good representation of what this means for your future child, okay? Yeah. yeah. 170 bucks. Yeah. As a good start. The yeah. more, the better. Okay. And we are back from the money case segment looking at what I want you to start considering for your future child and we'll be bringing this into your recommendation section, okay? okay. I organize, as always, my recommendation section in three categories. The needs, what you need to live in survival mode, okay. okay? If shit hits the fan, you need that amount of money per month to survive. Two, your wants. All that DoorDash, Ladybug, crap, and all that uh, stuff here is your wants. You don't need that to survive. Yeah. And the third one is the gold. This is the most important one that I want you to start considering ASAP. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because yeah. here you're on the route to financial disaster. Yeah. In your needs, identifying all your expenses right now, including your minimum payment, food, housing, transportation, gas, insurance. Today, per month to survive, you need 3800 your wants, my friend, with $51,000 of bad debt, I am cutting a crazy your wants. Yeah. All of that crap here has to sum to 225. That's what I'm giving you. Okay. The gold number, this is what I want you to leave this show with. Per month, you need to save $2,000. Mathematically, I looked at all your freaking single expenses. You can do it. Yeah. However, you need to cut a bunch of that crap. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. With $2,000 per month, you're going to then follow what we call a debt avalanche repayment. And what does that consist of? It is paying your debt with the highest interest first. In that case, it's your stupid credit card for the wedding that you had to pay. $2,600. Yeah. This should take you less than a month and a half to take care of this BS. Okay. Assuming you save $2,000 per month. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Working progressively through your payments 
what you're going to find is that as you progress mm -hmm. through your payments, you're no longer going to have those minimum payments here that are going to bring you down. Yeah. So you're going to be able to pay even more towards your debt. Today, mm -hmm. you take action. You yeah. put 2000 per month plus what you're going to start collecting from minimum payments. Yeah. It will take you, Martin, 17 months to be out of debt. Oh. 17 months, a year and a half. Like everything? Everything. And uh, by the end of our show, I will provide you with an exact screenshot of what you need to pay every month by credit card and how long is going to take you. Okay? Yeah. But you need to make efforts on this. And at the same time, I need you to start putting money on the side for your kid. You do not understand the financial applications, or at least I'm not seeing. You're two months before the arrival of a child and you're spending more than a thousand bucks on shit. Yeah. You're no longer 20 years old. No I, joke. I like 36 years old, this should be the last of your worries. Every single time you order DoorDash or Ladybug, you're like, well, shit, should that be not going towards my kid? Or should I not be going towards my debt? Mm -hmm. You have $225 to screw around. That's it. Mm -hmm. If your wife needs a little bit of mango, you use that 225 yeah. You lock down on the side. Because what I don't want you to do yeah. is in 10 years, would you rather spend your time working 80 hours a week? Or would you rather be with your kids that's growing up? Uh, with a kid. With a kid. Yeah. And so that's a decision today. Yeah. But this aligns with some of the short-term goals that uh, you've wrote in your application. Yeah. Paying off your debt, baby coming in, in September. Yeah. You really need to realign your mindset, my friend. Yeah, that's you know? yeah. You've taken a gamble by coming to the United States to live the American dream. Mm. Today, you're doing it all the opposite. Yeah. I want you to reframe yourself. You are a hard worker. Yeah. I'm not kidding, dude. I don't know anyone that does 80 hours a week. So get back into the right mindset. Yeah. My friend, I am going to call you in a month and a half. Yeah. And I'm going to send you a text that say, hey, Martin, have you paid your credit card debt? What are you going to tell me? Um, the answer will be yes. You shake my hand, you're going to do it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm not joking. Huh? Yeah. Every person here that comes to the show have a follow up. Yeah. Because what that means is that Martin, looking at the bright side, in a year and a half, you're done with any of that crap. Yeah. You have a car paid off. Yeah. You continue to work hard because mm -hmm. you need to build a foundation for your kid. Yeah. Once you're completed down in a year and a half, you call me back. Yeah. And you're like, Roman, what's my next step? Yeah. And I will tell you, all right, now we need to look at emergency fund. We need to look at retirement investments and so on. Set yourself for a strong foundation for your family. Mm -hmm. You are going to be a father. Yeah. Act as a responsible person that will take care of this. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. Anything that you would like to add as we wrap up our discussion today, Martin? I, I I have to like mature up and know it's no longer just about me or having fun. So I know it's someone else's life depends on me. So I'll definitely work hard at that and I really want to be dead free. So, okay. Yeah. You're a hard worker. You've got it in you. Okay. Yeah. You have experience. Just get to it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I will be following up with you as we mentioned previously. Well, guys, a fairly straightforward case here. We hope that you found some um, uh, value with the first time that we actually look into uh, an upcoming child that comes to this world and uh, that you understand the financial implication that this comes with. Um, we are excited about all the other stories that are going to come on this show. So we invite you to like and subscribe so you can follow us along for the rest of our stories. And until then, see you next time. A bientôt.